Shut on true, and welcome to my let's play of Star Trek Online. This is I'm the Big B R and the Big B 82, and this is part two of my Romanian Republic tactical officer. You think I've done enough of these? I should for the last two years I should be able to yeah you know, to say the intro. Anyway, welcome to my let's play. This is going to be more detailed than my previous ones, uh, but we're going to delve into the what I've, what I've done and what I've changed as well as other stuff before I do that I just need to how for the mission that we need to do which is the helix which is part of the arc that we're currently doing which is from the ashes so I shall have for that mission and then I'll get down to the RPG, the, uh, RPG, the uh, stuff that I've done and also go through the skill stuff if we're going to have a chance at breaking away from Sila and the Tal Shiar, we need allies. There are a lot of little settlements like yours out there. We're in contact with some of them, but we're always reaching out to try to make new alliances. I've heard that a group of Romulans has taken up residence in a Sulaban Helix in the Beta Quadrant. I'd like you to visit them. Feel them out, help them if you can. But most of all, find out if they would be willing to join Detan in his search for a new homeworld. Okay. Yeah. Click I to have order new your orders for you. Course to your next mission. Oh, I've done all that. It would, it would take forever. Because the, um, even though the Fertilla's over there and this mission's here, it's a good, cover about a good minute before you can get here because of the speed of the warp core. So, when we left off, in the uh, in the introductory mission and in the uh, tutorial we had some skill points so captain skills now here are the here are your skills so you have your engineering your science and your tactical now I would recommend putting some points into science to get to this which is the sector space speed as quick as possible and you have access to the and then you have access to the 25% increased speed which at lower levels is bloody helpful because we're a tactical officer we're going to throw most of our stuff and most of our points into tactical we do need a little bit of engineering um, but we're going what we need here is the energy weapons and, and projectile weaponry training now each level of this as you get increase I think it's increases the damage of your of the of your weaponry so we're going to put a point into, into the energy weapon draining but I'm also going to put a point into the shield capacity now this will be the only time you get to see the I'll actually show this bit off but it goes all the way down to the higher levels here and each level, each marker of these, you see here is bridge officer training manuals, which you can then, which you can make. So, because we're tactical, if we went down the engineering line, we'd get the mine dispersal, attack power omega, attack pattern bait. The attack patterns are here, delta, um, science ones. You've got the tactical team, your mine dispersal, alpha, fire at will, and beam overload. And in normal tacticals, you've got your cannon rapid fire, torpedo high yield, scatter volley, and torpedo spread. So that's the space skills. These are probably going to be most utilizing. Um, there's plenty of proper builds out there if you want to actually do it. But I, just, I just throw it around and see what I like. I normally do it for the manuals, but I've already got I've got so many characters I can make them manual. All these manuals. So, these are the ground ones, identical to the space skills, with the minor differences being it's every you got every so often you have a you have your bridge officer training, and you got a choice between photon grenade or smoke grenade, and then you have the willpower ones, the improved aim, and then so on and so on. Now. I haven't quite figured this lot out 
myself and I've been playing this game for years. But basically, you've got your weapon efficiency, which is your weapon damage. You saw your crits and stuff. This is your art, this is your shit endurance, this is your maximum health and your sh armor. This is your personal shields, so how long you can take damage and your kit performances and the damage output of your, as it says there, and your durations. Which is helpful for grenades. I think the kit performance is more helpful for like um, the for a science officer or a tactic or a ground or a engineering officer uh, because they do want to have their uh, cannons and medical stuff out quicker and they want more buffs on the healing items. With a tactical officer, it's mightly helpful, but we, we're going to be doing we're going to be in the mercy and taking the most doing the damage. So we're going to go into weapons. Again, this will probably be the only time I'll show this off until we unlock more stuff. The traits. I haven't, really met, I haven't done my. I haven't missed about the traits yet. Um, this is a species which is Romanin. Um, as you can see, every level we unlock another level of trait. And you get some base traits. So, what have I changed on the ship? Well, I have changed the ship. I thought I said I wasn't going to do it, but I did. I looked at the Travaro and I went, I want to have the Travaro because it has an extra tactical console slot over the normal to list and it also has a device slot. I also have these corrosive plasma weapons. You now have to, access, to get access to these. Unfortunately, you're going to have to spend Zen, which is real money, or, or have a lot of deal to sell. And they are part of the MUDS market, which is in here. And there they are, the corrosive plasma weapon repack. I wanted to keep it plasma, but for obvious reasons. I don't have access to everything that um, I want. You have to be level 10 to have access to the rest of the stuff. So we're, I don't have access to my Kobayashi Maru and stuff like that. Um, but so we've got corrosive plasma, um, and also I've made myself extra weapon um, mark two weapons from my other character because I have another character already made up um, so we got everything is essentially very rare it's because my my and my character is like in end, end, end level stuff and he's got maxed out everything so it comes in handy so that's the stuff we got on board. I have changed my appearance. I also have new weapons as well. Because I have uh, this my gambling device, which you've probably seen a couple of times me do it. It's like gives us little bit some buffs. And also I've messed about with Travano Kev as well. I haven't gone in and given him more abilities. Um, which is all these here. I have been overloaded and stuff like that because I forgot to do it. I'll go over the ground trainer as well and as well because this is gonna be a really short mission. So let's begin the mission, the Helix. We're also gonna be getting a new officer who's gonna be joining us, so it's also it would be a good time to go over the um bridge training the uh, bridge officer training manuals. Because these essentially are tutorial like missions. They get more serious towards the end of this uh, from the ashes, but most of these are just like short burst missions, a couple of them. It's just to get you in, into the game and teach you it really. We've arrived at the Helix, but we're not the only ship here. A tall Shi'ar warbird is approaching from the direction of the primary structure. They haven't raised shields yet, but their weapons are online. Wait, they're hailing us. Your orders? On to the hail. To the person in command. Be advised, you are in violation of Tal Shiar Security Order 63-R. Your vessel is operating in this area without authorization. Identify yourself immediately, or your actions will be considered hostile. Don't want that kind of trouble. 
What authority could you possibly have out here? The Tall Shiar has the authority to track down terrorists that threaten the Romulan Star Empire, no matter where they try to hide. And don't bother with deception. Our records indicate a warbird with your ship's designation was decommissioned years ago. We've already identified you. Stealing military property is a serious crime. Care to explain, Commander? Close channel on my ships. Oh, it's a... He's a, he's in a, no, he's in a Shibawa. Hmm, we didn't have much of a chance, did we? There's no anomalies, so let's contact the Sulaban Helix. Now, the Sulaban, if you remember, were a part, were a race that were members of the Temple Cold War. Um, the future guy was the person who they spoke to, and they were constant plague to the Enterprise and Captain Archer. So let's how the con let's contact them. We plead for mercy. There are only civilians on the Helix. We don't have much more than we can scavenge from the cell ships. As we told the other Tal Shiar, there are no terrorists here. The Cabal are long gone. Take whatever scrap you need, but please stop taking our people. We're not here to rob you. Then why are you here? We don't have much to trade, and we don't want any trouble. We're looking for Romulan refugees. There are a few Romulan refugees hiding within the Helix. They said they needed temporary shelter and would be leaving soon. We meant no harm. How were we to know they are wanted terrorists? Please just take them with you and go. We're not with the Taoshia. Your actions speak for your true goals. If you help us by repairing the Helix arm structures, then we'll help you get the refugees to your ship. But hurry, we're in jeopardy every moment you remain here. On our way. Now we've got to fix the arm. So let's go over to the Alpha arm and fix it. More Tal Shiar have entered the system. Please help us. Romulan battle cloaking devices can be used in combat, but your weapon systems and shields are disabled while it is active. Yeah, show off the, the cloak. If you let me decloak, nice. He's really loyal to the Empire, wasn't he? One more to go. As soon as Delta is connected, we can negotiate a transfer. Release of the. Well, not released any. 
I guess I have to transfer the... Now that the arms are restored, we've located the refugees. They are being moved to a centralized location so you can get a transporter lock. We've explained the situation to them, but a representative for the group is asking to speak with you. On screen. Kayan informs me that we're being transported to your vessel. We realize that we can't stay on the Helix, but we have no intention of being forced into servitude. The Tall Shi'ar already destroyed our home. All we want is for you to leave us on an uninhabited world, or someplace we can hide and try to rebuild our lives. You'll be safe with Datan. You have my word. We've heard of Datan. We've also heard rumors that he's plotting a revolt against the Tall Shi'ar. Going to him sounds more dangerous than staying here. Would you rather stay and be captured? I know I'm out of options. That doesn't mean I have to like it. I don't know why the Tal Shi'ar are abducting our families, but we can't afford to lose anyone else. How about I make you a deal? You personally guarantee that my friends will be safe at Datan's fleet, and I'll work for you. I've served as a science officer on multiple civilian vessels. I can help you. I just... I can't run anymore. If I need to fight the Tal Shi'ar to keep my friends safe, that's what I'll do. Is there a woman named Rana Kev in your group? Rana Kev? No, I don't know anyone by that name. Thank you. Prepare to beam aboard. All the refugees are aboard, but there's more trouble. A tall Shi'ar battleship, the IRW Koval, has entered the system. They're hailing us, and they're asking for you by name. Remember, they're not here to be friends. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that, that we destroyed numerous of their ships, Trevon. They're not going to be very nice to us. Put the one screen. You are ordered to stand down. You are wanted for questioning by the Tall Shi'ar. Lower your shields and surrender your vessel and crew, or prepare to face the consequences. Never the Tall Shi'ar corrupt. Your actions speak for themselves. You'll answer for the destruction you've caused today. Remember, you were given a chance to surrender. Ghost channel patches. I recommend using our cloaking device to get close enough for a sneak attack. Let me try it again. Some more guy. Okay. Like I said, it's, it's, it's a really short mission. It's not training us about teaching us about the uh, singularity weapon. Thank you for taking the refugees. Tell them we're sorry. We simply have no way to protect them. Hopefully, they'll find refuge with your fleet. Our best hope now is to cooperate with the Tal Shiar and tell them that you have taken the refugees. Do we have to do? We can't offer much. But I'll tell other Sulaban that Datan's fleet is standing up to the Tal Shiar. I'm also sending you the contact for a friendly local trader in case you need salvage or have goods to sell. But please, keep our involvement discreet. And please go. Leave now before more Tal Shiar arrive. Thank you, Kian. Kian closed the channel. He's right. They'll be lucky if the Tal Shiar let them live. We should leave and report back to Tamer. Some of the refugees we brought aboard may have starship experience. If we're expecting more trouble, we'll need some help on the bridge. Right, let's leave the system. Okay. Back into the beta quadrant, and you know, most missions can be turned in remotely. We already know that. Just uh, add a bit of help to me.
We'll give the refugees a good home here. They'll be safe, and we'll do all we can to help them. This is just the start. We won't stop until we're on a new world, one of our own. Okay, and we get Sanat, we get Sinatra, we get plasma torpedo, which we don't really need, and a new, a new personal shield. As well as a Sudaban cell ship personal comm code. Now I'll show you what that means. Greetings. Congratulations, Lieutenant. You have a new captain power available in your radio menu. Press the L2 button to show all your powers. Use the left stick to navigate this radio menu. Press the L3 button to set your quick power and update the default captain power to use. Press the right trigger to activate a power directly from this radio menu. Okay, so she can join us and won't do the boss rise at Contantra. What about you saying is we got this, which is a tap pattern, about tap pattern alpha. Set that up, and she's already here, and we get hazard emitters from her. Many Remans settled on greetings. We'll sort that out in a minute. So now I'm gonna go over. We because we've got how long, how long we've been going, how long we going in this part? Not long, I don't think. About 20 minutes. So what we'll do? We'll fire up the. Do we have transwarp? Oh, we don't have transwarp. Okay. Back to the fertility then. I thought they, gave, I thought they were giving us transwarp at this level, but obviously not. to the fatella as fast as possible and I'll go over the bridge officer training before we wrap this one up and the fatella is a temporary home of course but I'll show the new one when we get there but I'll show you around the Patilla, which you can also which acts like, uh, like um, ESD and Kronos for the for the for the first city for the Klingons. Don't think the Dominion actually have one central hub for their character because they think they they start end game. So technically, Deep Space Nine's their home base. I guess. Don't quote me on that. I don't think there's anything in the, in the Afghan Gamma Quadrant for them to go to. Or do you want to go to the Gamma Quadrant anyway? And yes, this is this is the fastest this ship can go. I think with enough speed. Whoop. Four, I think. Whoop, three. Whoop, five. Traveling at the same speed. As the uh, USS, as the as the Enterprise NX01, slightly faster because of the uh, um, our warp core, our singularity, thanks to my, in, thanks to my character, give us extra speed. So we went to the Fatilla. Now we briefly flew around this at the end of the last part, but the one we need to go and visit. I don't think I can do much because I don't have much in the way of, ex of experience to um, to train them. But if we come down to down here and into here. Cousin Club, and then it's this guy here who is training your bridge officers. Now, to train your bridge officers, you have to buy, you have to purchase manuals, and these are the manuals. So, each level, each rank, as you go up, they also go up. So we have, we have these are the ensign powers, these are the lieutenant powers, then lieutenant commander, and then commander. Now, ideally you want to have them have every single one of these powers because they're helpful, tactical teams, very useful. Torpedo spread is, is 
that's like fire multiple torpedoes at the angles beam fire at will is fire your weapons the beam weapons at man where overload is increased the chance of a critical strike with them and you've got the subsystem things now you have both space and ground and these are specialized ones now to train your officers you have to come into you have to have them in a station so they must be in in a station and then you come down and then you pick one pick your pick whatever manual you've got and then you train it to them but it costs costs um, expertise Is it expertise Exper experience yeah expertise so to, uh, promote them is one 1100 expertise I'm not sure where it's hiding Salvage engineering, so it's supposed to be here, but I guess if I get a manual, because I don't want her to do hazard team, not yet. I want her to, I want her to do, um, I want her to do science team. So we're coming to the science, and we get the science team manual. Don't worry about the money. And you come in, come into the crew station, come over to Sinat into Sinatra. Okay, and you go in here, and there it is. So, um, cost to learn the ability is 400, and we have 4,998 expertise available. We say, I want to train her that, and then now she will have the ability to do science team. Now, expertise, you get that for every mission, so if you go into this. This mission. Many Riemen settled on Crateras after the fallout from Shinzan's rebellion. While they were safe from the destruction of Romulus and Remus, Crateras is a bleak world with little in the yeah, way yeah, of okay. habitable yeah, land. If you see there, you got the experience. There are ample mineral deposits, which the Riemens mine and sell for food and other necessities, but their lives there are harsh and unforgiving. Anyone who could survive on Crateras for as long as the Riemens have has strength. We could use that strength in our search for a homeworld, and I know the Remans have no love for the tall Shi'ar. Go to Crateras, talk to the Remans, show them we are sincere and that we need their support. Yeah, we will in the next part, but until then. But anyway, if you come, uh, if you come here, you have all the, all the stuff that you get. So you get deal. You get we're gonna get a new bridge officer, which I'll go over there. She's an engineering officer. And we have impulse engine, a new impulse engine, and a and an engineering RCS accelerator, and then you have expertise and experience points. Experience is to us, and expertise goes towards training your bridge officers as well as promoting them. Greetings. So complete missions come, um, and if you come to the Vatilla, it's much more easier to find when I get to, when we get to the when we get to the next area. We can come as a Roman Republic. I'll come and show you, but come over here and speak to Centurion Howery and grab yourself some manuals and join your officers. Right, on the Big B82, thank you very much for watching. And please subscribe, comments are appreciated, as well as any thumbs up. And I will see you in part three. Crossroads at Kateris. Until then, ciao for now.